This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. Fault Analysis in Power Systems Part 2A In this video, we will outline 7 steps required in order to perform a fault analysis in a power system for a given fault and perform hand calculations, meaning calculate the current and voltage quantities during faulted conditions by hand. Now these seven steps are quite complex, but we've tried our best to minimize the complexity and to explain them as intuitively as possible. Now in part 2a, we are going to go over the high level overview of the seven steps in order for us to get a better understanding holistically. In the remaining parts, we will go through each step and review them in much greater detail so that we can get a really good intuitive understanding of the process involved. So in step one, the first step is to actually convert the system into per unit values. Now the reason why we convert it into per unit values is because we want to eliminate the voltage levels that occur in power systems due to voltage transformation. So if you have a low voltage to a high voltage power transformer or a high voltage to a low voltage power transformer, it adds an incredible amount of complexity when calculating fault currents. So in order to remove that entirely, what we will do is convert the system into per unit value and bring the entire system into a single per unit level. And uh, an example of this, a really brief example, will be is covered in part 2b. Now the second step, step number two, is to identify the type of fault that is being analyzed. There are symmetrical faults that do not give rise to zero sequence or negative sequence components because they are perfectly balanced. So they only have positive sequence values. And on the other hand, there are unsymmetrical faults that mandate the calculation of positive, negative, and zero sequence components separately. And because of these different types of faults that occur in power system and their different characteristics, we really have to identify the type of fault that is being analyzed because the remaining steps are dependent on it. Now in step number three, the third step, we draw the sequence networks for the unfaulted system. Now unfaulted system means that we are drawing the individual sequence network diagrams um, for the system. And in the later steps, we will connect the diagrams, you know, in, in a very particular way. So the unfaulted systems is simply the individual sequence network diagrams. Now, step number four, the fourth step, we take the unfaulted sequence networks and we modify and interconnect them according to the type of fault to make a faulted sequence network diagram. Uh, the faulted sequence network diagram will then be used to actually calculate by hand the current and voltage quantities during a faulted condition. Now this is a very tricky bit, so in order to get a better understanding of this, we created supp supplementary videos, part 2C and part 2D, in order to get a better understanding of step 4. Now in step number 5, we will hand calculate the sequence current and voltage quantities during a faulted condition. So we'll calculate uh, the positive sequence current, the negative sequence current, and the zero sequence current, depending on the type of fault that is involved. And keep in mind that step five, these current and voltage quantities are per unit values. In step six, we will convert the per unit values that we calculated in step five into three-phase current and voltage 
quantities that can be actually used um, and understood uh, intuitively. So uh, this requires a special sequence transformation uh, which is understood from the principles of symmetrical components. So we recommend watching the symmetrical components video series part 3 a and 4b the link can be found in the uh, description section below now in step 7 the seventh step this step can be actually be skipped um, and we're calculating the fault that occurs on the low voltage side of the transformer all of our current and voltage calculated quantities are based off the low voltage side. Now if we wanted to analyze what would happen on the high voltage side of the transformer for a fault that occurs on the low voltage side, uh, this requires a very special step. There are special things that we need to adjust in our calculation in order to make that assessment. Now this step is supplemented by uh, part 2 E and 4 A videos but you may skip this part if it's something that's above uh, your head or come back to it later. Now uh, all these seven steps are quite complex and it is necessary to review them uh, one by one and go through them in much more detail and that will be the basis of the remaining parts of this series. So be sure to watch part 2b and 2c of this video series. In part 3a we will be going over the three phase line to ground fault uh, calculations. Now if this video was useful and valuable to you please be sure to subscribe at generalpack.com and donate through Patreon, patreon.com slash generalpack. Become our patron and get valuable insights to our video tutorials and participate in webinars. Thank you.